because literally anything would be better than this. What is up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, today we will be doing a code review of a popular YouTuber and streamer by the name of Thor or Pirate Software. Now, why should you care and who the hell is Thor? Well, Thor has been the talk of the town as of recently, as he's been an extremely large streamer that has come out against a pro-consumer movement in the gaming space called Stop Killing Games. Stop Killing Games is an initiative launched by a man named Ross Scott, who is an advocate for consumers in the video game space. The purpose of Stop Killing Games is to prevent publishers from revoking access of games from people who have paid to play those games. There are plenty of examples out there of publishers that produce games that require online access to play, but once they pull the plug from their servers, consumers now stop having access to those games. The Stop Killing Games movement is looking to advocate on behalf of consumers in order to mandate that game publishers and game developers have some sort of end of life plan for games such that they can continue to be played after the developer would like to stop supporting them. To me, that makes total sense. It doesn't sound fair and isn't right for you to be sold a game as a good, but for it to effectively be a service with an unknown expiration date that the company can not support at any time. Okay, now why am I picking on Thor here in particular? Well, Thor has not only what appears to be lied about his experience, or at the very minimum played it off as something that it's really not, but he's also misrepresented the initiative and has doubled and tripled down in that misrepresentation. If you're gonna be putting forward something that you wanna start a conversation to eventually become legislation, and these are the reasons for it, not only can I not agree with the initiative, but I can't agree with you, and I won't agree with Ross. There's no way around that. I think this is gross. To sum it all up, no, I will not be supporting the initiative Stop Killing Games. Cryptically wishing for the movement to fail. So I'm going to be honest with you. I hope that your initiative gets everything you asked for, but nothing you wanted. I don't know why you do that, but he decided to do so. He doesn't even have to agree with the movement. He just needs to admit that he misrepresented it. Now, other creators have reviewed this drama to no end and have gone over his employment history and timeline, but what I want to do that I guess would make this video unique is go over his actual code from his developer live streams and analyze whether this guy has the skills that he claims he has as a 20-year veteran and game developer working for Blizzard and other game publishers, etc. My name is Jason Thor Hall, also known as Pirate Software Online. I've been in the gaming industry for about 20 years. I used to work at Blizzard Entertainment, then Amazon Game Studios, and now I own my own studio, Pirate Software, by the same name, which is an indie studio, and I've been here for about eight years now. Now, why should you guys listen to me about any of this? Well, I'm a C++ developer with five years of experience in the quantitative trading space. I've read dozens of books on C++ and over half a dozen books just on C++ design, from influencers on the, in the space to professors to people that also have YouTube channels to time-tested time and trusted books. I've read a lot, and while I'm not an authority in C++, I'm pretty likely to be somebody that can suss out a bad practice if I see one. At least I hope. I also have a bunch of open source contributions in C++ on projects that I find interesting, like Monero. Now, when I was making notes for this video, because I like to come prepared, I thought I'd need to go through dozens of different developer streams. But what I found out really quickly is that I can only find two developer streams that Thor actually brings up code on the screen in and in those developer streams he one does not actually do any coding the code is just visually there on the screen and 98 percent of the actual stream is him looking at his subscribers looking at his tip jar as to how much money people have sent him and also looking at videos about games but never actually doing any game development in a dev stream without further ado let's actually take a look at some of his code all right, so I'm going to be linking these VODs in the description box below. I recommend people actually download these VODs before he takes them down because honestly, if I was claiming I'm a game developer with 20 years of experience, this would be embarrassing to have online. Let's take a look at what's really wrong about this, and I don't even need to be a game dev to understand that. When you look at the code here, what do you see? You see a lot of magic numbers. That's an industry term for numbers that don't have any description or explanation as to what they are or why they exist. And you also have a lot of true or false, which is not descriptive at all. 
When you look at any function call as another developer, you should understand what's going on without needing to read through the implementation of the actual method itself. So part type sprite, part type size, I don't need to read through that to understand what's being passed to it and what it's doing. But that's not what's going on here. I shouldn't need to ask myself, what is this number one? What is the zero? What does it signify, right? Imagine we have a car object and I create the car object by passing in 96, four, false, false. Do you have any idea about what those numbers mean? How I'm initializing that car? You don't. A step above that, a better alternative would be to specify in words what 96 means. For example, unsigned 32-bit integer horsepower equals 96. Number of doors equals four. Is automatic equals false. Is electric equals false. And then pass that into the construction of car. That is the bare minimum. That's what I would expect out of an intern that's fresh out of school. Taking that a step further, you can implement a concept called strong typing, which is the most expressive form of instantiation. What we can do in that case is define an alias at the bare minimum or a class, and we can call it horsepower. And then we can create an enumeration for things like transmission or fuel. And then we'd alter the car's constructor and pass in that information, horsepower 98 door number four, transmission automatic, fuel, gasoline. You don't need to be a game developer to know that that's a lot more maintainable than whatever Thor has here. Another really good example of that is at 2556. So if we jump there, okay, right here, alarm zero, alarm one, alarm two. What is that? What are those alarms? Is it an alarm for person A, an alarm for whatever character, an alarm to do what? It's unexpressive. It's really spaghetti code, in my opinion. Okay, let's go to around one hour and four minutes. This is also a complete mess for a couple of reasons. First of all, Thor is using the incorrect data types. This isn't even getting to some sort of advanced design or design pattern. It's showing a complete, complete lack of understanding how to represent information in a program. Okay. What do I mean by that? Well, look at question asked equals zero. Question asked, in my opinion, is true or false. Has this question been asked? It should be a Boolean data type. What does zero mean? Booleans are represented as integers under the hood. So in C++, anything that isn't zero is true. So one is true. But why would you even give another developer the option to write question asks equals equals 42? In theory, that should be true because anything other than zero is true. But why even allow somebody to write code that can potentially be that confusing? It's just a no-go. Another thing here that I noticed is the absurd amount of comments. Most of the time, you don't need to write comments in your code. That's because your code should be self-documenting. But there is a 1% to 5% case rate in which you should be writing comments only if your code is extremely complex. And that's not the case here. This is a simple if statement and a simple switch statement. You don't need to add comments here. Having a comment for we have asked the question and question asks equals 1 is totally superfluous, a waste of time, a waste of space. I'm not sure what, why it was added, if, if not just to waste time on a dev stream, to spend more time pretending you're coding than watching videos. Okay, let's take a look at his second stream because the rest of this stream is reviewing other games, looking at his subscription count. I don't know why he gets so horny looking at this. Um, watching video games etc. You guys get the point. Storyline array number. Oh my god. <laughs> Here he appears to be storing a timeline of events in a flat one-dimensional array with random numbers as the indices in order to represent said event. So literally anything would be an upgrade over what is written here. For example, what he could have done is created a nested structure where all of those default values, instead of being hard-coded and written in some file, can simply be stored in a YAML or configuration file that could be edited outside of the build as to not waste time rebuilding the entire application in a YAML or XML format. That's 
Development 101, you learn it in the first week of your new job as either an intern or a junior developer. What's even worse is he now also needs to remember what 419 means. So somewhere in his code, he needs to actually add a comment or something to represent what a 419 is. As you can see here, I found the file that contains all these events, which are the association between a magic number and some state. It's very obvious that this can get very unwieldy extremely quickly. As you can see here, he has some number associated with 0, 1, or even 2, and then he needs to detail in a comment what that means. Now, imagine a developer accidentally puts 2 here or 3. Finding, tracking, and solving that bug is really going to be a development nightmare. What if you forget to type 3 here and accidentally type 2 and start associating coffee cold knowledge with floor 2 coffee age? Or even worse, in your code somewhere, instead of typing 213, you type 214 and now need to go back and track why your game is misbehaving. This is extremely poor practice and can get very messy very quickly. Not only that, but this is going to significantly decrease the velocity of your development because you're going to need to jump between the storyline vars file, find the event you want to reference somewhere else in code, and go back to that line that you'd like to reference the event in. So you're going to constantly need to be jumping between files, forgetting, potentially mistyping, and it's just a recipe for disaster. When it comes to the nested structure though, tell me what you think is better. What Thor has here or what I have on screen, which in my opinion is much more expressive. Now this goes beyond simply liking code better. What I have on screen is objectively better because it makes it harder for you and others to make mistakes, and it's a lot clearer as to what's going on. I don't even need to know how this game is designed to understand that whatever he's doing here is not optimal. I also don't need to rep recommend the most optimal data structure because literally anything would be better than this. Another thing that's really, really weird is that he's using these numbers to represent people, and now everywhere he writes the number one and when it represents a person, he needs to remember that it's Shelly, which is presumably a game character. Imagine removing all these comments. Would you, as a newly added game developer to his game project, have any idea that one is Shelly? You would have no idea. This would never, ever be allowed in a production repository, and like, I, like I've been hinting, it's below what you'd expect of a bottom tier intern. One way to improve this is to write case and then switch on an enumeration. So case character Shelley. That is way, way better to whatever he has here. Another example is at 159. More magic numbers, 32. What does message 32 mean? What does message 65 mean? What does message 97 mean? And what are these dialogue options 2, 5, 6, 0? These, this is a culmination of my past couple of comments, all in one steaming pile of. Surprisingly, that is all the code that I can find in these game developer streams. This is the game that I work on. It's called Heartbound. Now understand something. Before I send you this link, do not buy my game.